five people. So um, the the origins of this video lie in feelings I've had for a while now about uh, um, about party politics, and uh, I've been thinking a lot about the Tories because obviously the leadership race is ongoing. Um, I've made a number of videos about Richie Sunak and Liz Truss, and no doubt there'll be more to come. Um, I'm still not sure why they've drawn out the process so long. It seems a bit strange um, for it to last a whole month when the initial contest was relatively short with all the candidates. So to have it narrowed down to two and then span it out for over a month, um, but not announce it um, until the last minute. So there's no transition period. It just seems a bit strange. I don't know the way they've done it. I think it would have made more sense to have, say, three weeks of Sunak versus Truss and then two weeks for whoever won that to sort of transition, something like that. I don't know, it just seems like a strange way of doing it. Um, but Rachel Johnson, the Prime Minister's sister and journalist, um, she has come out and said that people who don't show up to GP appointments be fined £30. Now, Rishi Sunak was proposing £10. Um, firstly, about Rachel Johnson, I think she is seriously compromising her reputation as a journalist because she's just becoming um, really a, a propagandist for her brother's government and for his band of Tory populism. I think it's a conflict of interest. Now, she's entitled to her opinion, like anyone, but um, when she's the Prime Minister's sister, you know, it was... Really, not long ago, she was attacking people for criticising her brother. And then she had the audacity to complain that they criticised her for that. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't be an objective journalist whilst having a conflict of interest. I think, um, of course, the natural thing is you'd want to defend a family member. That's normal, right? I'm not questioning that, but I think it's a conflict of interest when you're a journalist. Um, it's like the Cuomo's in the United States. Andrew Cuomo as governor of New York, when he faced the sexual um, assault allegations, his brother Chris Cuomo um, provided help to him uh, at CNN, and that was a disciplinary situation. Um, so high-profile people need to be aware that perceptions of nepotism or sort of helping each other out, won't go down well with the public. Um, but there's a lot more I want to talk about here. You know, I've spoken a lot about woke ideology. Um, I made that video about that billboard in London. Um, and uh, there was a bit of a follow-up to that. There was a Tory MP, Neil O'Brien of, I think, Harborough in Leicestershire, who criticised that. And uh, he mentioned that he'd recently nominated a black woman to be prime minister. The implication being that this notion of um, white privileged straight men is um, is inflammatory. And I agree with that. I think it was inflammatory. I stand by everything I said in that. Now, there'll be other videos I can make where I'm criticising Labour and what I feel Labour needs to do to get my vote. I live in a Labour seat, Sunderland Central. This has been Labour for half a century, more, um, including the predecessor constituency of Sunderland South and Sunderland North. Um, and that's partly to do with our history, but there's other reasons as well. We were close to being a red wall seat, but not quite, because it stayed Labour. Um, but there's a lot of things I dislike about the Labour Party right now, and one of the main things is the pandering to wokeism. Um, but at least Keir Starmer doesn't have a dangerous worldview, as his predecessor did, as exemplified by my, by my previous video. But anyway, that's for another video. Uh, I don't want to talk about the Labour Party here so much. I want to talk about the Tories. They are still a party of government. Um, and I think a lot of people will be frustrated by this race because the vast majority of us can't vote in it. Now, notwithstanding the fact that we've never directly elected prime ministers, um, it's hard not to feel that there is sort of disenfranchisement going on on some level. 
because although Liz Truss and Risha Sunak are also Tories, so, you know, as Boris Johnson was, they'll still have their own ideology and their own positions. Some of it will be continuity Johnson, but some of it will be their own positions. And the vast majority of us have no say on that until the next general election. So maybe, maybe there should be something in our political system whereby when a new prime minister comes into office, they should be obliged to hold a general election within, say, a year. Um, because this is always a controversial thing. It was controversial when Brown took over from Blair. It was controversial when May took over from Cameron. Um, in fact, in my lifetime, only, only two prime ministers if I'm getting this correct, came into power by general election, um, Tony Blair and David Cameron. Um, Gordon Brown, Theresa May, Boris Johnson um, and John Major all ascended into that office because their party was in power. I'm not including Thatcher because she first came to power before I was born. Um, so maybe it is time to really look at this. But it's like political reform, you know, for anything to change, it won't happen overnight. But I think if there's enough public disillusion in the system, maybe it is time for change. I don't know. Um, it's something at least should be discussed, debated, looked at. But uh, that this attitude of Rachel Johnson just charged people £30. Well, there's a very big flaw with that idea, which is that many people will say, well, wait a second. What about GPs and clinics cancelling appointments? This arbitrary, let's just punish them all without looking at individual circumstances. It isn't going to work. I suspect a lot of clinics won't impose it. And even if they do, what about staff who then have to deliver the message and may have to put up with abuse as a result? I think it's just going to add more bureaucracy to the system. What the NHS needs is more funding. Um... And maybe the Tories should be looking at that instead of trying to scapegoat patients. Now, there will be people out there who are selfish and inconsiderate and they, they will just cancel their appointment at the last minute with no good reason. But there will also be people who, for example, have maybe kept an appointment. They've went along to their clinic and for whatever reason they've had to wait and wait and then they've given up and they've left. Um, so that might class as a missed appointment. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons for this. It just seems too familiar to me to the DWP. So, for example, a welfare claimant is given an appointment, but then they suddenly get a job interview, and they go to the job interview for obvious reasons. They need a job. And then they're penalised by the DWP for missing that appointment. Now, the Tories are very hard line on this, and I think they've got zero understanding of the situation that claimants are in. Uh, and they're all, you know, ever since David Cameron came to power, um, and there was a brief respite actually by Rishi Sunak as chancellor during the pandemic when it was a bit hands off and it was a bit like, they were a bit less draconian than usual because job centers were closed. They knew that they couldn't really put these arbitrary sanctions on people, not in the same way. So it was a bit hands off at that time. but. I think fundamentally the Tories um, will always look for ways to to try and punish people, right? So instead of looking at administrative error in the DWP and claimants, you know, through no fault of their own, being deemed to have missed an appointment, it's the same thing with patients in the NHS. It may well be the patients haven't been inconsiderate and just... They don't want to bother telling the GP surgery. It might well be that they've tried and they phoned and they phoned again and again and they just can't get through. And maybe they've had um, an emergency situation where they've had no choice but to cancel it. Um, so this sort of arbitrary punishment. I doubt Rachel Johnson has ever been in the NHS. I mean, it's call it a prejudice, but I think the Johnson family are... A family of privilege and that's not anything to do with ethnicity or anything like that i'm just talking about them as a family from what i know of the johnsons i read um an extensive biography about boris johnson and 
it really got into the way the man thinks. And I think that runs in the family. I think they feel that they are just born to rule. And the irony is for being such rebels and for being such sort of eccentric figures, for want of a better term, um, mavericks, they actually have a pretty entitled mindset. I mean, Rachel Johnson's deluded if she thinks that this will go down well. And again, I know there will be some people who are abusing the system, but I think it's a minority. Like I say, there will be people who've tried to cancel their appointment and for no fault of their own because they can't get through. They've tried and they've tried. They just can't get through. And then they're penalised. And this might be some of the poorest people in society. I mean, the Tories, given half a chance, would have the whole system privatised. Um, this is one of several things I really dislike about the Conservative Party. I do think that fundamentally... Although they've got it right when it comes to identity politics, and they're right about meritocracy, okay, what they're not right about is the sort of survival of the fittest mindset. This idea that if someone's struggling, it must be because they're lazy, or they haven't applied themselves, or they're being too dependent on the state. I do think the Tories lack compassion as a party. I'm not talking about individuals in the party. Of course, you'll get examples of Conservative MPs and Conservative members who are very decent people. And I'm sure they give money to charity and I'm sure they do decent things. But I do think there is a guiding philosophy amongst Conservatives of survival of the fittest. It's kind of, well, I've been successful for this, so there's no excuse for you not to be. That's their mindset. It's a kind of one-size-fits-all mindset. And I suppose the criticism of someone that came me bad enough, although, although I find her refreshing and I like the fact that she's criticised identity politics, I suppose the argument would be if you have had a black guy and he's unfairly been stopped in church and he's totally innocent, he might think, well, what does she know about my experience? Maybe, Maybe there's something in that. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm saying this to someone who, you know, I like the positions that she's taken. But I do think the Tories really need to understand that the perception out there is once again going to them being the nasty party. I mean, for a while that was Labour with the whole anti-Semitism thing, but they can't keep throwing that at Labour. They've replaced their leader and Keir Starmer has made really serious efforts to purge the party off that. Um... So now the Tories, this, these sort of punitive policies, a while back they had a similar thing about middle-class drug users. Now, I happen to think if someone is knowingly breaking the law, that's wrong. And I do think that um, drug users need to take more responsibility. I agree with that. But the problem there is double standards. I mean, traces of cocaine have been found in the Palace of Westminster. Um, one of the biggest contentions I have with the Tories right now is this may not be universal, but it is widespread in the party. This kind of entitlement mentality of one rule for us and another for everyone else. Both Sunak and Truss are basically, especially Truss, I have to say, she's went out of her way to defend Johnson. She didn't resign, and the most she can muster up is, oh, well, he made mistakes and he apologised for them. Not good enough. Not good enough. Um... You know, the one thing that would get me to vote Tory is the fact that they are quite strong on national defence. And when it comes to Russia and China, that's extremely important. But I do find it hard to reconcile some of their domestic policies. This idea, for example, that, well, he just made a mistake, like delivered Brexit, so let's forget it. I don't think Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak, especially not Liz Truss, I don't think she really understands public anger over party hate. And if I were, these hustings are just Tory members, but if I was were at, were, if I was at an event and I was to ask her a question, it would be this. It would be, Foreign Secretary, what are you going to do to clean up your party? What are you going to do to ensure that there isn't one rule for Tory MPs and another rule for everyone else? And will you discipline Tory MPs 
to break the law. I'm sick of people making excuses for Boris Johnson. And she's one of them. Um, there shouldn't be any double standards. If a Tory MP uses drugs, then if they're going to bring in draconian policies, rightly or wrongly, it should be applied to Tory MPs as well. Um, and they need to stop making excuses for party gate. I'd get rid of someone like Nadine Doris. What she came out with earlier, that um, that tweet, uh, uh, you may not be familiar with this, but she sent a tweet basically showing uh, a sort of Shakespearean image of Sunak stabbing Johnson in the back, Julius Caesar style. James is just a satire. It wasn't her tweet. She was retweeting it, but she deleted it. But this coming lesson a year after Sir David Amos was stabbed to death, I think that's just a bad taste. And it shows that they're being quite foolish, actually, this blue-on-blue -blue situation and who's true Brexiteers. Um, and both Truss and Sunak have done it. I mean, you know, that's another thing I really dislike about the Tories, the way they've turned Brexit into this religion. Of course it's important, it's a big thing. I mean, it was the biggest democratic vote in British history. So I don't underplay that, but I still think they have this kind of cult-like mindset of unless you're a 100% uh, lever, you're not pure enough. And, you know, the way they treat their fellow Tories, anyone who expressed any concerns or uh, one's vote would remain. I mean, Liz Truss is kind of a convert, so she seems to be um treated a bit differently but i think theresa may was treated appallingly i mean the vitriol she faced as prime minister when she was basically trying her level best um to deliver brexit it was disgraceful because those hardline brexiteers all they were doing was making her job harder you know by constantly sniping at her and constantly vilifying her while she was trying to go through very complex negotiations um, I think the Tories focus on financial background is something I really dislike. This idea, for example, that um someone's asset to the country should be judging how much they how much they make, basically. I mean, the Tories' ties to Russian oligarchs needs to be seriously scrutinised. I would argue a Filipino nurse is bringing more to this country than a Russian oligarch with ties to Putin. But who's going to be making more money? And, you know, for, for all this talk about finding people not turning up to GP appointments, um, Sunak was offering NHS staff a pathetic 1% pay rise. Um, it's There's just a lot that is wrong with Tory thinking. Um, and this is why I would seriously, seriously, think carefully before voting Tory. This doesn't mean I'm in a rush to vote Labour. And it doesn't mean I dislike everything about them. I do think they're good on national defence. I think they're broadly speaking patriotic. Um but I do think they have a bit of a compassion deficit. I do. And the fact of the matter is on the Tories watch, it was the same in the factory years, rough sleeping is on the rise. Um food banks are on the rise. These sort of problems always increase on the Tories' watch, every time. I mean, they can't really argue against that. So, I don't consider myself a lefty, but I do have some big problems with Tory thinking. Um, and Rachel Johnson just exemplified it.